Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of How Stories Work. Today, I want to talk about The Harder They Fall, which is a Western on Netflix, which is absolutely fantastic. I loved it. And part of the reason why I loved it was because of the stories, some of the particular dynamics, which are the kind of stories that I like. But definitely the cinematography, the acting, the music, everything about it's really super cool. But as you'll see here on narrative first, you'll see I marked it an incomplete story. What does that mean exactly? If I go into the story form that I built with subtext, the premise reads, however bleak, when you abandon hunting someone, you can get revenge. So what does that actually mean? If I look in the story form, the two key elements here are pursuit and avoid, which are classic Western motivations. If you check out Old Henry, it's there. If you check out Unforgiven, it's there. Where there's a problem with either going after something and then you need to prevent or stop it. Or there's a problem with running away from something and you need to actually go after it. So it's very clear, very classic Western American culture type storytelling. So in The Harderly Fall, the main character here, who is, what the heck was his name? That's right. The main character, Matt Love, this is interesting. I actually had to look through the article again to see what the main character's name was because I couldn't remember it. And that's usually a sign. I saw this maybe two or three weeks ago. If I can't remember the main character's name, that's usually a good sign that it's an incomplete story. Because the reason why there are some stories that last with you forever and some stories that you completely forget is whether or not they're complete or incomplete. And the measure of whether or not it's complete or incomplete are these four through lines. The main character, the objective story, the relationship story, and the influence character. If one or two of them are missing, you're going to forget the story because it didn't tell you a complete story. So why is that important? If I drop into subtext here and I go to perspectives. Okay. So here, this is a slide from my Calhoun's days. The four perspectives, all meaning in story is derived from these contexts. When we look at conflict, we either see, I have a problem, you have a problem, we have a problem, or they have a problem. And these line up with the four through lines. The I perspective is the main character through line. The you perspective is the influence character through line. So you're looking at somebody that's an impartial look at somebody. You're not them, but you're watching them to see what they do. You have the we perspective, which is not the main character and not the influence character, but actually the relationship story, the relationship between the two of them. And then you have the they perspective, which is everybody in the story. And that's typically the plot. What everybody knows is the story. The reason why complete stories are far superior to incomplete stories is they give you an experience you can't get in real life. In real life, if you take the I perspective, then you can only see you and you can only see we. You can't see they. You can't step outside of yourself. If on the other hand, you take a they perspective and you're looking, at a group of people. You can see you and you can see we, but you can't see I. And so the reason why a story is something that lasts with you forever is it gives you something that you can't get in real life, which is meaning, which is why I used to joke with my students at Cal Arts that life is ultimately meaningless. And that's why we love stories because they give us meaning. They give us all four perspectives at once. So we can be simultaneously within ourselves and without ourselves. That's the whole point of writing a complete story, why I keep pushing on it. When you look at the harder they fall, the reason why I marked it incomplete is because the influence character through line and the relationship story through line are basically missing. The objective story is there, it's really strong. The main character through line is definitely strong, but then the influence character doesn't really kick in until halfway through. And then the relationship story is essentially just the climactic scene. So let's go into the harder than fall. This is the story that I built with subtext. Dropping into the story form here, we can see the four perspectives, those four through lines. So the plot is your classic revenge plot with people chasing after other people. Well, I'm going to get him for what he did. And then by the end of the story, Nat actually turns his back on Rufus and says, stay away from me, stay away from me. And then eventually. The reason why he shoots him is to prevent Rufus from getting closer. That's the change there. It's not a really good thing for him. So that's why it has echoes of Unforgiven, which is another story that is a success bad story where 
They successfully achieved what it is they set out to do, but it ultimately proved to be a bad thing. And that's what gives you that bleak, bittersweet ending. Those are the kind of stories I love. That's why I love Secession, because pretty much every single episode is success bad, at least for the first two seasons. And the same thing here with The Harder They Fall. It's success, but then that question about did you get rid of the devil or whatever it is, you know, Morty's starting to forget it, and he's crying, he's not sure. That's the bad part of the story judgment. What is missing? So what is missing is this influence character through like Rufus Buck, which spoilers, if you haven't seen the film yet, please watch it before you continue with this video because it's really great and the surprise is fantastic. And so here's the spoiler is Rufus is actually his stepbrother. The influence character through line, Rufus isn't there for pretty much half the film, which is why the first half of the film, it's hard to get yourself into it. It's really funny. It's fun to watch. The operatic Western stuff is fantastic, but emotionally it's hard to get into it. What they try to do instinctively is they have stagecoach Mary come in and fill in the gaps while Rufus isn't there, which is perfectly legit. In dramatic theory, the character isn't as important as the actual perspective that's being put forward. She does come in and take on that role of the influence character, but because there isn't an awareness of what is thematically consistent with what Nat Love is going through, her influence is a bit off. She is somewhat arguing, let's just stop doing this and avoid everything. Her song has that issue of hope. Her song about how awful everything is for them and that kind of wanting and missing sort of piece that's there. The definition of the subconscious can be longing for something. So she is there and it's, it's good enough. So I, I would probably say if the objective story is 100% in there and the main character is 100% in there, influence characters maybe 40% in there. What's totally missing is the relationship stories. And this would be a really hard one to pull off. They try to do it with the romance between Stagecoach Mary and that love, and it's there a little bit, but then it's gone. It drops out once Rufus is out, but you really don't get a sense of it until the very end. And I'm not sure how you would actually do it. What's nice is putting all the pieces together here in the last act that's conceptualizing. So that feels really good, but finding a way to have that relationship story grow from beginning to end, there is the opening scene, which is essentially part of it. And behaving a certain way is their first signpost of being, but you'd really have to go in there and, and find really clever ways to develop their relationship or hand it off to the romance with stage coach, Mary, you could do that. But I really think the heart of it, once they have that moment at the end, then it all comes together and you finally understand, oh, this is what the story is about for right now. I'm going to put the heart of they fall the story form back into subtext. But I'm going to find some way to mark it so that people can see, oh, the influence character through line is not there 100% and the relationship story is not there 100%. There's enough of an indication, but if you want to see what it's like when the influence character through line is missing or the relationship story through line is completely missing, you'd want to watch this film. And then you could also see an indication of how you could go about fixing that by looking at these story points and seeing how the through line develops through each act. That's it for how this story works and I'll see you tomorrow.